Alrighty, this is a 408 cubic inch small block Chevy. It has a small chamber, AFR 210 head on it with 13 and a half to one compression. Right now it has an 850 Demon carburetor on it. We just did a short break in and now he's lashing the valves. What we did learn from the short break in after we um, ran through it, we did a quick little pass, just a short little three second pass, making really good torque. And the fuel is too much fuel, too rich. It's in the 11s all the way through. So probably going to uh, make uh, another pass, pull all the data that we can from that pass and then make some adjustments. Got three carburetors and different styles of intake and spacers to try today. So we'll see how we make out with that. Here we go. Man, it runs good. Jesus, that runs really good, eh? Really good. Wow, that runs really good. Is that what it always makes? That runs good. It's so easy to drive. The cam must be different or something. His is easy to drive. You see how easy it is for me? Boom, boom, done. It's very easy to drive. Okay, let's look. <coughs> still rich. It's still a full point rich. <coughs> yeah. It's getting closer here, but it's still a full point rich. It will probably make uh, at 12, uh, like 1280 or so, probably make another 20 horse. It's already making good. <laughs> but look at how good the carburetor is. 70, it just sticks there the whole time. It's beautiful. Carburetor works it's nice amazing. too. Oh, Jesus. Nothing wrong with that. That's fueling good. Yeah. And it's so easy to drive. It doesn't want to take off. Eh? It just wants to, like, it's slower than yours to go up in RPM. It's really nice. Okay, the guys are taking the um, metering blocks off the carburetor. That's what contains your main jets. We're still a full point too rich, so we're like, Anywhere from 1150 to 1180 going through, we'd like to see something in the 12s. And if we could, we'd like to see 1250, 1280. So what you do is you pull the metering blocks off the carburetor. That's where the jets are. Take the jets out, put a smaller orifice in the jet. So we're going down from 87, probably down to about an 82. And in the front, there was a 79 because it has a power valve. So we're gonna go down somewhere, probably like a 70, you know, a 77. So we'll probably go down something like a 72 because it's still way too rich and it can't eat it. It's got a beautiful torque curve, but it just cannot make use of all the fuel that it's getting right now. So I'm gonna make some improvements and go from there. The timing's the timing. He's happy at 36 degrees, but here with this, we gotta take some fuel out of it, make some adjustments, make it better. God, made more power. Oh yeah. That was a nice run. You could hear it at the end. It was pulling harder. That was nice. Yeah! Much nicer. That's it. That's it? And remove the carburetor. That's nice. Yeah. If you're going to make the best use out of your dyno time, you want to know what things actually work better. This engine, we did a little bit of jetting on this Demon carburetor. The Demon carburetor is fueling perfectly. If we get it set at uh, 1260, it just seems to stay there. It might be 1260, 1270, but it's really nice. We just did that. We made another 10, 12 horse by just making the jetting correct. And at the same time right now what we're going to do is switch to a brand new xp so that's going to be your holly xp the three circuit the really good carburetor we'll see how close they are once we get them jetted in i'm sure 
that Patrick is hoping for more horsepower out of the uh, Holly XP. They're both the same size. We'll see if the Holly XP transitions better, works better, and is it worth the money? We're about to find out. This is a this is a better uh, that makes more power. Oh, I think that's, that's look at the way it pulls on the top and it never does that. Wow, that's nice. That works good. I didn't watch the uh, I didn't watch it on the way through. But sometimes when you already have a really good working carburetor that's jetting very nicely all the way through the range, you really don't want to change it, especially when you're making. 570 plus foot pounds of torque and you're making over 600 horsepower you may want to leave it the way it is but they have a better carburetor a new carburetor they know if they make the change to this one is definitely going to make more power but sometimes it takes some adjustment this one came from the factory about a half a point too rich it transitions nice it runs nice it doesn't idle we're gonna to have to fix that but as far as horsepower goes and horsepower curves it makes power everywhere. It works very good. The Holly XP versus the Demon. The change is subtle, but there's definitely more power and more average power, which is nice. It's tuning very, very well. So what they're going to do right now is take one set of jets, one number lower in the front, one number lower in the rear. We'll get that, that spot on. So we're somewhere 20, uh, 1270, 12.7 AFR to 12.8 AFR on this machine and he's also going to try two degrees less so we're going to go from 36 to 34 just to see if it likes it been able to jet this so that it's very consistent 580 foot pounds 650 horsepower running extremely well pulls nicely to 7,000 rpm the guys are excited things are going well but now after trying a different carburetor we're going to put a different spacer on it so this one's more of a sheer plate than the Wilson style manifold that kind of goes in and small and speeds the air up We'll check and see where this one, it actually goes to like a square bore with a lot of little bumps and what they call dimples in there. And it does what's called shearing or emulsifying the air and the fuel together. We'll check and see if it's going to make any difference. And this is a really nice way to spend your dyno day. You do back-to-back -back testing and you can see if something's really going to make a difference or is it just a waste of money? We'll find out here in a minute. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> That's the best of the day. Like the best uh, modification of the day. Yeah. Wow. Look at Okay. When you do dyno testing, you're always looking for something, and people bring you lots of gizmos. And most of the time, those gizmos don't really do much. And in this case, this one that we showed you, this tapered spacer, this this absolutely does work. I don't think we could ask for, look at the horsepower curve here. It's just going straight up. And the reason is because it makes, it makes better torque 
and it holds the torque longer. This is the best it's held the torque the entire time. So this, that's that's just excellent. We'll, we'll go over the actual results, like, but that's as good as it gets. To bolt something on, I don't know what it costs, but to bolt that spacer on, we'll give you the name of it and get that result. Whew, that's excellent. Already the Wilson Manifold oh, has creme. been the creme de la creme for a few years. People put it on, they immediately notice a difference. They notice more throttle response, makes a bit more power, and it really jets nicely. But this, last pass, we took the Wilson out, we put in a new type of dimpled spacer. Still four holes. It is a polymer racing products. And if you look at it, it's got little dimples. What the dimples do is actually increase the surface area of the flat of the here, and it forces the air to go more quickly over the same surface area. Because the air has to travel further, it mixes the fuel better right here, speeds it all up, and it makes for, we just proved it. It just made like 35 horsepower just by bolting that on, and it was better everywhere. Okay, we did a solid lot of testing on this motor. 408 cubic inches, it's a little bit bigger bore, a little bit shorter stroke, it runs extremely well, but we tested two carburetors. We tested two different setups on the second carburetor, the, well, the Wilson Manifold. We tested also a new Canadian manufactured polymer base that actually has dimples in it. We tried that out, it definitely, definitely was worth the money. And in the end, this engine runs extremely well. It's gonna make 580 um, foot-pounds of torque all the time. It's gonna make somewhere in the 650 to 670 horsepower, just depending on the day and the weather, but all the time. It runs well, it jets well, it starts well. And in the end, we learned a lot here by running this motor, trying, we tried 34 degrees, this motor hated 34 degrees. We put it back to 36, where it's where it has been running. It's more responsive. We've done a full amount of testing on this motor and learned just about as much as you could in a day of testing on a motor. So really happy with the way this went. 408 cubic inches and a really nice day of testing. Thank <laughs> you.